Welcome back. I'm the Colorblind Architect, and I thought today I would share a few of my productivity tips, of just a few simple items that have increased my ability to perform quicker than a lot of other architects. And these are things that are available to everybody, so let's get started. First, I want to talk about PDFs. PDFs are something that we all have to deal with, especially in the digital world. Now that the pandemic put a lot of the paper review of plans at cities, um, made it almost obsolete. Most cities nowadays aren't even accepting paper plans and they're only wanting the digital. And this means you need to provide PDF plans. Now, of course, PDF, PDF plans, um, when published from ARCHICAD, can be just enormous. So here's one that's really, really easy. So go to the Mac App Store. And if you don't have a Mac, then you might have to look for a different app. But for Macintosh, get PDF Squeezer. PDF Squeezer, super easy. It's a great app. And here's how it works. So let's say you, let's say you have a, a PDF file. So let's say you have a PDF file. And with this PDF file, let's just say it's, um, let's just take this plan right here off the desktop. We're just gonna drag and drop it into PDF Squeezer. And instantly, you can see, it's gone through and it's reduced the file size by 22%. Now this one was already a pretty small one. Now, let's say you have a 100 sheet plus set of plans that is coming in at like 200 megabytes because you've got a lot of vector graphics, a lot of color, a lot of raster, and you need to get it out. Well, I can promise you, your contractors are going to hate you for it because it's so huge that a lot of them, they're trying to open them up on tablets or even sometimes even on their phones. So you need to get the file size down as quickly as possible. Now, the best part about the PDF squeezer, so yeah, you drag and drop it, and then you can drag and drop it right back to the folder where, you, where it was or to anywhere else or even into a an email application, it's a fantastic app. I highly recommend it. So the next one you should be getting is PDF Expert. PDF Expert is made by Readle Technologies. Um, the reason why I use this is because the Although Apple, the Mac preview app does a great job with PDFs, but there's a few things that it's missing for full function for an architect. And namely, that is sufficient annotations and stamps. Now, obviously you can do annotations in PDF preview, but the best part about PDF Expert is it has it's just as it's just as quick as Mac Preview, but then you've got a pen tool which you can also turn into a highlighter. You've got an eraser. You've got text. You've got shapes. You've got an actual text highlight tool. Then you've also got your notes tool, and then a signature tool, and then here under stamps, these look like stupid stamps that you wouldn't really be using as an arch architect, but let's say you're reviewing a submittal. Boom. Now you can add a submittal uh, stamp to any PDF really quick and easy. And all it is is just adding a stamp and these stamps can be made from PDFs, from JPEGs, PNGs, 
So it's super easy and I find that to be one of the most valuable things. Now obviously there's a lot of other features on it that are really helpful, but that's the main reason why I got PDF Expert is so that I can really quickly do red lines of plans for my drafters or to engineers, or I can apply stamps. And this includes my architect stamp, which, you know, in certain instances, I might just put that into ARCHICAD, but in many times, if it's an ARCHICAD file that's shared with others, maybe it's with uh, drafters that I don't know as well, I might want to control that and only stamp it in the PDF before I send it out personally. The next app I want to show you is called Tick Tick. And it's a to-do list and a calendar. Now, I know, Mac already has a pretty good to-do list and it also has a great calendar. In fact, I only use the Mac calendar, but for tasks, I find that the Mac, the built-in task app for Mac is not as well developed. Now, part of the reason why I say this is it doesn't really allow you to have subtasks or attachments. Um, it's not as good at the due dates or letting you know, and it also doesn't really um, do very well at letting you organize. So on Tick Tick, I can organize this by different functions. So, you know, obviously you've got your, you know, personal items, your shopping lists, your work, but then I also set up stuff for this channel. I also set stuff up for, for various clients, you know, to type a task, you know, we can just say test task. And then within that task, we can set a due date. And then under here, we can write in a description, right? But we can also change that description to be a checklist. And that way, if you have a task that has a lot of subtasks, you can go through pretty quickly and easily create a list. And actually, if it's already, um, if the text is already formatted so that it has a um, return line after each sentence, you can actually just copy and paste it into this and then just hit this button and it converts it between regular text and checklist text. So it's a really great tool, really simple. And then, like I said, you can also drag and drop uh, files. Uh, obviously, that's more for the paid version because of the file storage limitations of the, of the free version. But I love it because sometimes I just can't remember where I saved something. I, if I save it with the task, then I can get it out of my email app faster and be able to be functioning. Next, for the productivity hacks that help me, I wanted to show just a few quick things that uh, speed up my process in ARCHICAD. One of those time-saving tasks is how I handle consultants' email, you know, consultant plans, like engineers' plans. What I do is, in my project navigator, if you go to the layout book, I actually create the full set of plans right within my template. And then when it's time to bring in plans from a consultant, what I will do is I'll just go ahead and I'll create a series of sheets. And then I'll change these to blank so that it's just blank at the size that their sheets would be. And then what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop into my plan, you know, into my ARCHICAD. And that way, as you can see, I can actually have the full set of plans built out in ARCHICAD. Now, why do I do this? Now, this takes a little extra time to set up. But the reason why I like this is because so many times when you're setting up a plan set, files can be in different places. You, you can forget where you saved it. 
and to have to remember to piece them all together in a PDF app can sometimes be really confusing. Then also, when you're actually doing the drawings, if you're in ArchiCAD, but all your uh, all your engineers' drawings are in PDFs that you have to look on a second monitor for, sometimes it can be a little bit um, confusing and easy to lose, misplace. I find it's easiest just to keep them all in one place, and that way when it's time to publish a set of plans, I don't have to remember that I need to add those engineers' plans into the PDF after. I can just publish the full set of PDF plans right from ARCHICAD. It's so much easier. The next thing that you can do with this, PDFs are so powerful in ARCHICAD because, like I said, you can drag and drop your PDFs right in to the paper space or the model space. And then on top of that, let's say, let's say you need something and it's only available in a PDF form, but you need to be able to use CAD line work. Well, Graphisoft, Graphisoft has you covered here and you can explode a PDF. To do that, you just select the PDF, say explode into current view, and we're going to not keep the original elements. And bada bing, bada boom, doo doo doo. We wait a little bit. The bigger the PDF file, the longer this can take. But after a moment, you can see we've actually got editable text and editable line work. Now, of course, as you can see, some of these hatch pattern lines are actually showing up as lines and not as part of a pattern. That can be a problem. So this is obviously not an ideal solution, but it can be quite a time saver. Rather than having to completely redraw something, you can at least have a basis for getting started. So the next thing I want to do is illustrate how easy it is to drag and drop SketchUp files into an ARCHICAD file. Now sometimes SketchUp can be really great for objects that you just can't find anywhere else. And if you go to 3dwarehouse.sketchup.com, uh, there's a huge library of stuff that have been generate. It's been generated by just random users and it makes it really nice and quick and easy to be able to find things. The problem is Trimble recently uh, deprecated support for SketchUp 19 in the 3D warehouse. Even though those files are, avail are there, they don't make it available for download anymore. Version 20 of SketchUp is the, only, is the oldest version of SketchUp that they're now supporting on 3D warehouse. So unfortunately, that does not work for ARCHICAD 25, which only supports up to version 19. So a little bit of a problem there, but what we can do is we can take this supplies rack, and that's an SKP. We're just gonna drag and drop that into ARCHICAD. And as you can see, it's got a little object there. Once I place it, it's going to convert the SketchUp file into a GSM. And once it's done, we can actually do a little super marquee. And as you can see, the object is there. Now, obviously, this object would be easy to build natively with an ARCHICAD, but it is nice for some more complex items. Um, like three compartment sinks, I, 
I always have a hard time finding three compartment sinks of the right size and shape in any format other than in SketchUp. Um, so that's that's one that hey Graphisoft, if you if you if you'd really like to help, um, get some three compartment sinks. We really need it here in the U.S. because every commercial kitchen we need to have a three compartment sink. Um, grease traps would be helpful too. So just saying. The next is CAD files. Sometimes you have CAD files that you need to be able to work with. Uh, these would be DWG files or DXF files, um, typically created by AutoCAD. Um, sometimes you just need to be able to use them. Um, sometimes it's a detail from a manufacturer. Sometimes it's something from a civil engineer or whatever. But what you can do is just drag and drop that DWG, place it, Skip all the SHX files because honestly that's more trouble than it's worth. And then we're just going to go ahead and click the zoom extents button. And we can see that the CAD file has shown up. And it's right here. Um, so all the pieces and parts of that come through pretty good. The challenge with this is sometimes if you bring it in at the wrong scale, it's really hard to scale because the text will blow up in the wrong size. Uh, but, you know, it does work. Now, let's say you need to actually be able to edit some of this line work. Same thing with the PDFs. You just select the DWG file, right click, and then go to explode into current view. And you can choose whether you want to keep original elements after exploding. That's if you want to just save a copy of the imported one, or you can just explode it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to explode it because this is just a dummy um, file for just for illustration. And once it does it, same thing with the PDF. A lot of times you're not going to be thrilled with the results because sometimes um, things like a line type turns into a bunch of separate lines and dots or, you know, um, a hatch pattern might actually be comprised of a bunch of lines um, instead of an actual pattern. Um, usually it does a pretty good job, but, you know, um, see, like, for example, this toilet it doesn't come as a block it comes as separate blocks and line work so you know just just be advised that this is not a good replacement for using good archicad drafting techniques okay one of the next items a lot of times you need an object and it's really hard to find these objects. So, you know, let's say you go to bimobject.com because you're looking for a, you know, some kind of product that you can actually um, download. Um, let's say, let's say it's a, a special type of door, okay? And then when you click on the download, the nice thing about BIM object is a lot of times it does have the ARCHICAD, but sometimes these files are only available in the Revit format. So let's say you download the Revit format and you want to be able to bring that in. Well, thanks to the great guys at Graphisoft, they make it super easy for us to import these. So go to File, Libraries and Objects, and then down to import RFA as GDL object. And then we're just gonna go to the downloads folder and I'm gonna list this because I have way too much stuff in here. And we're gonna find the RFA file. So in this case, it's a vessel sync. It's in an RFA format. I'm gonna click open. And unfortunately with the RFAs, you cannot just drag and drop them. You do have to go through this process and convert it first, then you can place it. So 
So then the next thing is we choose what kind of object it is. In this case, it's suggesting that it's MEP equipment, but I'm going to call it out as an object because it's a vessel sink, not actually the part of the plumbing, even though it is a plumbing fixture. Uh, you can also choose how, mu how many polygons you want. Go ahead and click import. Okay, now that we've got that created, we can go to our embedded library and we'll find that this vessel sink is now available for insert as a GDL object. And go ahead and place it and voila. Um, we can also look at it in 3D. And as you can see, it came in pretty good. Now the limitation to the importing of RFAs is sometimes product manufacturers, when they create these um, RFA files, sometimes they'll save multiple versions of a particular object into the same RFA file. Um, the biggest example of this is uh, Salisbury mailboxes. Um, when they create their uh, Revit families, they put every single type of mailbox that they make all into one family, which is great for Revit, but it sucks for ARCHICAD users because when ARCHICAD imports the, the RFA file, it imports whatever the default parameter settings are for a particular family, which means you may have to have Revit in order to fix this. The final thing that I wanted to share with you is how I do site vicinity maps. Uh, this is something that we always have to do. We have to show where the project is. And this is just something that I like to do. I create a independent worksheet um, named location map. And I put that on my cover sheet in the template. Now, the reason why I do leave this little piece of text here is just so that it gives it a placeholder so that you can actually see that there is something there. Now, then what I do is I go into my maps app and I'm just going to find a random town in Nebraska. Why? Just because. Um, so then I, I just go ahead and zoom in and sometimes I'll select an actual place. I don't know whose house that is, but sure. Um, let's say that's the site. Then with command shift four built into the Macintosh, it allows me to do a screen grab by window selection. I'll drag and click that. And of course that brings up this little pop-up in the corner. And then I'm just gonna drag and drop that into ARCHICAD. Okay, and then once I have that, I'll just take a quick PDF, all right, no, a quick annotation hatch. I usually go with a foreground, no, with a, I usually go with like a 25% and then maybe a gray and I leave the background to null and I'll set the outline to maybe like a, you know, a medium weight pen. And I'll just draw over the approximate site boundaries. As you can see, it maybe came in a little bit too light. And maybe we wanna add a splash of color. I'm gonna increase it to 50%. The idea is just to make it so it's easy to see it. Then we're gonna create a quick text note. 
I'm gonna make that bold. And I'm gonna double the size of this. Okay, now I can go back to the cover sheet. And because this was already um, on the sheet, I don't have to really do much other than we're gonna go ahead and fit this to frame. We'll go ahead and size it down just a little bit. And then position it, maybe drop down the scale to something a little bit more viewable. Okay. And then we just adjust it there. And now we have a very easy to create sitemap. Now, here's a little, here's another little tip that I like to do. So take that same filled region. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make this maybe like a 75% and set it as white. And we're just gonna draw that over the whole entire map. And then we're going to bring to front the site. Now it looks like 75% was a little bit too strong. And what that does is that just kind of whites out the uh, photo behind it. And so that way when we go back to our, our cover sheet, you can see that the photograph is still visible, but it's a little bit more washed out. So you're not wasting as much ink when you print this, but it also makes it easier to see where the site is. It just makes it a lot more readable. And then in this case, because there's some text on the map uh, for Third Street, we're just gonna move the North Arrow into an easier spot. So. Those are just a few little quick hacks that I thought that I'd share with you today. Hopefully they've been helpful. And again, I'm the Colorblind Architect. Peace out.